All right, let's do this thing. Uh, we are in the round of four, the semifinals for the 2006 Shinhan OSL Season 2. And today we're watching Midas vs. Anytime. So, uh, two great players, actually, and I'm really excited about Anytime. We've sort of been watching them through the t tournament. We haven't seen so many games from Midas, but... Let's fix this camera going on here. And yeah, super excited about um, watching Anytime. Midas looks like a teenager. Amazing. Um, not sure of the maps, actually. All right, we are starting on Arcadia. So we saw some strange things from Bisu on this map. Actually, um, expanding to the mineral only. We noticed that the, the tanks can actually hit the mineral line of the natural, uh, which I think makes it really awkward for Protoss players. Super we'll have to see uh, how any time approaches this, because I do... I do think at this time, at least, any time was the better Protoss player. Be this is the, the first tournament Bisu qualified for, so still up and coming. Setting out that early pro interest, maybe just wants the forward game. Mm, what is this it's like when you're with your friends and they're like laughing. You're like, oh, what are you laughing about? And they're like, ah, you won't get it. You won't get it. It's like watching another language. So supply depot going up. So we just wanted that forward pylon and gateway. It looks like. Yeah, dropping the gateway now. So nothing too crazy going on. I think Midas was kind of just known as a solitary. I don't know if he had sort of any defining characteristics. You know, dropping that barracks. So it looks like this is a 12-12 from Terran, which I think when you have a high ground main, it's totally totally reasonable you don't need those marines out very early and you can sort of delay everything to make sure your scv production doesn't get interrupted with the 11 11. gateways up i don't see yeah it looks like he is going to start that cybernetics core and the assimilator is already up as well so everything looking straightforward out of any time and now he's sending out that probe scout so pretty late scout but not really looking to do anything other than just find where Midas's base is currently. So I couldn't quite see, but I think he was actually taking some guys off gas. Um, yeah, and we just see one SCV, so this looks like pretty straightforward 12-12, pull some guys off gas once you get the 100, and then just leave one on there for a while. Depending on how much gas you want, if you're going to go siege mode first, you might want to put those SCVs back on a little before the factory finishes. Range hasn't started yet, and it looks like he is just going for goons, not getting an early zealot. I'm trying to remember when Bisu expanded on this map. I think it was pretty early. Was it something like a 12 Nexus? I can't quite remember. But it was a fast expand. And yeah, getting the third supply depot be uh, be before the command center. Now getting the machine shop. It looks like he's made three marines. Winner is any time. Look, mom, I can read. I can read a sign. Oh, boy. 
So dropping the Citadel of the Dune here, anytime wants to get a little crazy with DTs. And this is sort of... Oh wait, have we seen range? This might be the fastest DT build, right? If he didn't get range... He might add a second gateway as he starts that Templar Archives so that it finishes in time to make two Dark Templars. Um, oh, but I think he's going for DT drop. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got range. It would make sense why he's playing so passively. There goes the second gateway. You don't really want to reveal that you don't have range, and it's something that the Terran can pick up on. And Midas is dropping that early. Or I guess this looks like a fake double push, right? Probably rallying vultures with mines. Although I don't see the machine shop spinning, unless it's already finished. So dropping that uh, command center. It is kind of a late command center when you think about it these days. Everyone's trying to get that command center earlier, but yeah, this is a Templar DT drop, and these are real fast. Real fast DTs. So we're talking like six minutes, I think. Engineering bay now going down. And I think this is the way to go as a Terran player. Like, if you don't scout the Nexus, you just get the engineering bay to be safe. If you do scout the Nexus, you can get the academy and the armory. The engineering bay is kind of like, I don't know what's going on, let's just be safe. Whereas like the academy and the armory is kind of like the preferred approach, I think. Yeah, quite a far forward turret, which unfortunately is not going to be great against a drop. He's putting one in his main. I wonder if he's going to hide it with that engineering bay. Yeah, the DTs are out. So here comes the dropship. It is unfortunate we don't have a timer, but I think this is right around six minutes. First turret's going to be up, but he could easily target that. And okay, Midas is bringing one tank back, but two DTs can definitely deal with that one tank. And it looks like he wants a double expansion. So he's already taken a second Nexus, and I see something over at the third. Here he comes. Midas sees the shuttle. And the shuttle's actually going right in, but four Marines are going to be annoying. And he's actually just dropping the DTs in the natural. The Marines trying to get over to the shuttle, but they do get cut to pieces by that one Dark Templar. Now starting a second turret closer to the mineral line here. Another SCV down. And he's going to shuttle them over to the main. And Midas was quick with the additional turret, so he's already almost got another one up. Oh boy, these DTs kill that thing so fast. He gets one shot off before the turret is cleaned up. And now that machine shop's exposed, which if he doesn't have uh, mines yet, this is a real pain. Now getting the academy as well, because turrets just aren't enough to deal with the shuttle DTs. And the machine shop goes down. So now he's making vultures, but I, I think this is just desperation vultures. I don't think he has mines. And now he gets the vulture. Ugh. See, the really delicate thing as a Terran player is you don't have a lot of units. And the DTs are so strong. You really can't afford to lose any of them to the DTs. Because then you just won't have enough firepower to actually kill the DTs. We see the compsack going down now. And anytime time's going to take out that gas, which is just kind of annoying he could probably just being actually pretty uh conservative i think with these dts just getting what little damage you can from the safety of the dark safety of the dark so he has seized up that tank he does use his first scan Couple tanks fire, one of the DTs go down, but another one in that corner. It looks like something's... Is that the shuttle up at the north? Looks like a yellow unit. It must be a shuttle, because it's ignoring terrain. Gets another SCV. Oh, they're pointing out 10 kills from that Dark Templar. And I think these DTs definitely paid for themselves. Oh, that's so brutal. Okay, good. So Midas does clean up that second DT. The shuttle did make it out, so... Yeah, and during this time... Anytime, picking up two bases. Now starting to add gateways. And we see some Dragoons moving around. I'm just feeling a little tired today. I'm not sure why. Yeah. 
Oh, he looks like he just found the engineering bay, so he's gonna kill that, which will be <laughs> annoying. See Midas trying to get up a turret ring while this dies. And yeah, anytime going straight up to a fourth. So anytime really just using these DTs to go uh, uh, majorly economic, setting himself up for that late game. We're already seeing a Stargate go down, so Anytime is just literally doing everything. And yeah, we see Midas still on one factory. I think he's spent all his money that he's been getting on turrets. And this is the real trouble, because the real problem is actually the shuttle. When players are doing this DT things, because DTs themselves aren't that big of a threat. You can just stop them at a choke point and stop the damage from happening but oh it looks like this is an island expansion but the problem is the shuttle because if you don't have armory and goliaths or a wraith you really can't deny the shuttle from coming back over and over again so i think this is why modern we're, modern play we're seeing a lot of wraiths out of terran players rushing up to starport Goliaths are another option, and that's really what we saw out of sort of the Flash era, is getting that quick army upgrades in Goliaths. And that does help you with getting enough firepower to kill the Dark, uh, dark Templars as well. But I think something like a Wraith is just like a guaranteed shuttle kill, and that's so significant. So I mean, I don't think Terran players mind getting an early starport if it means they can just stop the shuttle harassment. You save so much money on turrets. And you really don't need turrets if you can kill the shuttle. Then your scans become useful in picking up the DTs. So we do see a huge flux of units. It looks like maybe I get the natural transi transition from Dark Templars is Archons. So is, well, what did I say? Arbiters. Um, so I think, I think that's the way that any time is going. Getting up the Stargate. And it looks like, yeah, he's just continuing expanding. And I think as a Terran player... It, it comes down to your push. You're kind, you're kind of all in on this push when the Protoss player takes so many bases, I feel at least. Um, you need to do a ton of damage, um, potentially even ending the game with your push because the Protoss player can just remax the take the, once they have the map. Uh, if you don't get on top of the production, it can be so easy for a Protoss player. They really just need to survive this one push that's coming. Some vultures getting picked up in the middle of the map, and he, okay, Midas, I think he's ready, so he really has quite a few tanks, and we're going to see that vulture number um, swell as he adds his rallies of that, probably producing vultures out of all his factories at this point, but it looks like the shuttle speed is done. I'm not quite certain about the zealots. Yeah, zealot speed is also done. Starting to lay some mines at the front. And I'm not sure if this is buildable terrain. It doesn't look like it because he doesn't have any turret uh, SCVs with the units. Good dodge of the zealot uh, zealot bombs. And Midas is going to start a fourth in the far corner. Um, oh, Midas is in trouble though. Like, this is a huge army from any time. And I think this is the real concern. Like, like I mentioned, that... The shuttle's completely uh, uncontested in the skies, and and any times push can't really siege because the siege tanks are gonna get dropped on by the zealots. And man, any time is just pushing right through. As soon as he sieges up, I imagine the shuttle's gonna start dropping zealots. And good spread. Is this a wow high templar? Not not maybe the best storm there was, but I think just wanting to at least get it down. I mean, if he's stopping this push already, it's over. That's that's the reality of it. If if he's if this push is over, anytime's got this game. He's on five base to three. He's already got high Templars, already Arbiters out. He's not doing anything silly like walking into mines. And Midas is likely to go into full turtle mode, but. You just can't imagine a player of any time's caliber is gonna gonna throw this game at this point. Just so strong. All he really needs is some zealots here to support. 
Wow. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. We, the problem with Dark Templar drops is actually the shuttle. The problem with Reaver is actually the shuttle. And I think Terrans have been so good lately at answering the real problem. And so, yeah, four or five bases up. Midas is getting that fourth in the top left. Plus one weapons, they're pointing out, is complete. Two armories up. Midas is doing what he's... And he actually is starting to build turrets over there. So it is buildable, buildable terrain. And now, anytime's ready to go in, we see those zealots streaking forward, getting on top of those forward tanks. He does have a stasis, which gets four tanks. That's so much. Anytime you can get more than three or four tanks, that's... A huge damage. Now we see the storms over the tanks on the left hand side, but yeah, anytime really doesn't have enough here, and I'm surprised by that. Oh man, if Midas wins this game, he's gonna make me look like a fool. That's okay though. I am a fool when it comes to StarCraft. And if I wasn't a fool, I'd be S ranked. <laughs> I mean, this is a little strange, though, because Midas is kind of leading him right to his expansion, and now Anytime can just take down this expansion. Midas looks like he's bringing up units. Yeah, potentially. A storm going down on those. Oh, the pole actually pulled the SCVs into the storm. So a lot of damage being done to those SCVs, but I think Midas is giving up this base. Yeah, it looks like he did siege some tanks at the low ground to at least stop this army from getting out of there. But anytime we'll get this army in. Well, I speak too soon, of course. Bunch of the vultures running in trying to mine around, but my anytime is making a move down at the bottom center ramp. Or not ramp, bridge. Yeah, micro dragoons can be really hard to pick off with vultures, but. Okay, anytime's doing something over here, they're pointing. <coughs> Looks like he wants to hit from the bottom, and there's actually nothing siege here. He's going to get on top of those tanks before they're able to siege. They are running up. Great storm on the vultures. Oh, unfortunate, actually. Stasising the units that he storms, but oh, boy. Hello, zealots. Here they are. So all those tanks are going down, which means he's just got those three forward tanks over by the natural, stopping the army, killing his... Oh, he looks like he did clean up that base, so he does have fourth, but... He doesn't have an army. A handful of tanks, not even a handful. Three, plus two weapons, plus two armor done for any time? This guy. He just literally did everything. The DT's just bottom time. Just bottom time. He got up to everything. At least stalled that push long enough for him to get an army and... Ha, see some Archons. Love it. Loved watching TLO use some Archons in TVP at the 20th anniversary. It's hilarious. Playing against Huck. <laughs> I mean, use the storms, throw the Archons together. Ooh, a lot of mines getting placed behind, and actually, five tanks over here, so. I mean, he's not scanning it, so this is just sad. Too much going on. And this, this is what happens, right? You don't have a turret with that army. Oh my goodness. One zealot, one dragoon is going to clean up five tanks. Oh, that hurts so bad. And look, he's taking the six o'clock position now as well. Anytime is just on top. This is just across this map. Oh boy. Actually getting some mines on that army. So, I mean... Yeah, we see Midas transferring. Another stasis hitting two tanks and a Goliath. Ha! Just stasis a couple vultures for fun. So this army's all going to disappear. Ugh. Yeah, look at the rally. So it looks like he has maybe about 10 gateways. Comparing it to the amount of units coming. Oh, yeah, Midas. GG. Well, I mean, anytime played that amazingly. Saw the DT drop. Really not do that much damage, but it uh, it was used for a purpose. Okay. 
let's jump over to the next game. We're probably going to watch, I think, two or three games today, um, depending on how long they are. All right. Game two, so. Yeah, DT drops. I think I think Terran players can certainly complain about them. I think we certainly have some answers these days. I think one of the options is the Wraith with the Comsat. The other option is your Goliaths. But either way, you need some way to deal with the shuttle. Because DTs in a shuttle is just gross. Okay, so this is Arkanoid. Ugh. Oh, I'm really feeling for Midas. I think he needed to win that first game because I feel like this game, as we mentioned, island maps are, you know, as Artosis would say, island maps are unwinnable for Terran. You're basically locked into Goliath dropship. And, you, I mean, maybe with some, maybe with some sort of modern thought, Goliath dropship could be interesting like I, I haven't played on island map so I really don't understand it but we do see Goliath builds in TVZ um, so I feel like there there must be some hope for that matchup but maybe not maybe not Valkyrie's a lot more common So we've seen a lot of fast expansions on this map. We've seen Good Friend pull out a two, eventually a three barracks uh, medic marine bust. Um, other than that, I don't think I think Nada did want win one game on this against a Protoss against TT, uh, but I don't think it was that. Um, hmm. I don't think the map played that much into it. I think. Nada just kind of played a straight up game in BTT. Uh, eventually switching into Wraiths against the Carriers. So I think this is uh, going to be tough for Midas. I'm not sure which player would be considered better at this time, but I think any time at least proved himself over the, the following four years. Just kind of an all-around strong Protoss player in Pro League. So he is actually getting a gateway, so not going for Nexus first. That's certainly interesting. It is. I think Protoss are the most affected by those Crystallis. Um... You know, Zerg don't mind necessarily making a second hatch slightly out of position because they can make a third hatch in the right position. Terran obviously lifting their command center, but Protoss are the ones that are, I think, most punished. And actually, two gates. What does this mean? This is weird. So one option I could see is making Zealous to kill those Chrysalis and taking a second and a third Nexus. Okay, one option. Other than that, can you really imagine Zealots breaking down the temples? I mean, it would be obviously something he practiced, and potentially it's an option. So it could become like a 2, 3, potentially even a 4 gate storm across the map, and just going all in. I mean, you wouldn't expect this as a Terran player because it's such a Protoss favored map, but... Oh my goodness. And so this is what he's opting for. So this is this is new, right? This is something we haven't seen. And he is going to tech up to Dragoon. So maybe he's going to make like two to four Zealots and then follow it up with Goons and just go. The one difficult thing is how is he going to scout which base Midas is in? Because you're breaking down these temples, but from the center, you don't know there's three places for him to be. And Protoss, again, don't have a good way of scouting that. Terran can float buildings, Zerg have overlords. Yeah, I feel like Protoss just... Okay, so we see that Cybernetics Core going down. I mean, Midas just starting that barracks. He did go CC first. Still doesn't have his gas. Like, gateway units are a lot better than, than 
Terran on no gas. Okay, the first temple's down. He's up to three zealots, so I wonder if he's made any more zealots or he started that goon production, depending on if that cybernetics core is finished. What is this? Expanding and then adding more barracks? This is madness. Oh, boy, this is madness. Wait, is he just going to get lucky? Does Arkanoid have specific spawns? I know Terran versus Terran. No, because Nada versus... Um, oh, who did Nada play? They had top left, top right. I think Bisu versus... A Terran was top left, bottom right. So I don't... I think... How is this happening? Oh, okay. So it looks like he's going to glitch a probe through, potentially. Building that pylon and pushing the probe through. Okay, that makes sense. That's an interesting idea. Definitely something... Oh, no luck there. This is really an art form, and he gets it the second try, and so he's going to know... He's going to know where... Yeah, the sweat. Oh, and he sees all those marines. So what does that mean for his build? Because I can't believe he's going bio here. This is madness. This is so cool. So he's up to two gates, and he's got three goons, and it looks like immediately starting a citadel of a dune. What does that mean? Could you imagine, like, zealot leg speed or something? Okay, he's got his first bunker about finished. This isn't looking good for any time. That's a lot of Marines. Medic's just finishing. Behind a bunker, I... I don't... Yeah, he doesn't have to pull the SCVs. He doesn't have to do anything, right? This is just not that scary. As a Terran player with bio, I mean... The options that Protoss do have from here are scary for a Terran player. But right now, the Terran's really not scared of gateway units with Medic Marine. So Templar Archive. So it looks like I imagine he's going to go Storm here. This doesn't necessarily make sense to go Dark Templar or something. Because the Academy's done so early. He has Comsat. Looks like he already has turrets up. He might even be getting infantry weapons or armor. Looks like he's also breaking up the pathway to the 12 o'clock. And he's... Oh, he's target firing. I mean, if he goes Dark Templar here, understandable. But I imagine High Templar are really what you want. Starting to build. Stim coming forward, going to pick off... Oh, not the greatest reaction time for many time. Lose about half the health on one of those Dragoons. But a lot going on here, and the pressure starting to mount. Any time is not expanding. So it looks like this path can get him into the main, right? He's going to go around the bunkers. And Midas has to feel something's wrong here. He's only seeing the goons. It's actually funny, because if you have the academy, you can actually get the marine range upgrade, which means they're going to match the, the range of the goons once they're in a bunker. Okay, he does send that SCV, so he's going to scout it. That is El Naga Temple, almost done. Looks like he is building DTs, so there you go. Wow. And Midas could have potentially used some of those scans to try and find Anytime's base. Oh, boy. So the te Zelnaga Temple's done, and now he's adding two factories, so he does want to swap out of this, maybe going to tanks. But he looks like he wants to make this wider. Now starting to add some bunkers over to the side. Dark Templar sneaking in. Is he still only on two gates? That's so impressive it's, if it's true. You can actually spend all your money on two gates. Need some coffee. Okay, so, oh, immediately getting scanned. So that Dark Templar didn't do anything of note. Oh, any time is sweating so bad. You see that? I mean, he's the one that won. Maybe this is what... He's really feeling the pressure from that first game win. Because he probably should win this map. Maybe feeling that pressure, right? Oh, and again, the Marines were stimming forward. 
going. Yeah, after a scan, they're going to pick up this DT. Now he's heading down to the south, or the east. So much posturing going on, but I really do feel any time is in a bad spot. Okay, we do see four gates, so that's what I would expect a Protoss player to... We do see some units over at his natural and his third now, so I think any time's going to pivot here. I think he's realizing he's in trouble. Another comp sack going down. Does he get it, though? Oh, he does. Comp sets never feel to last, never seem to last that long when I'm playing. But they seem to last so long when I'm spectating. So he's going to break over to the natural now. And we already see some supply depots going down to create a wall here. Man, anytime does have a huge army. Does he have leg speed? It looks like he has zealot legs. They are moving fast. And if that's true, the zealots can get on top of the bile. It can actually be a closer fight without leg speed. I mean, oh, the tanks. Three tanks getting sieged. He's going to be able to protect that temple, I think. Yeah, anytime. You cannot afford... Oh, boy. Look at his neck. I think they're picking up on the strain right here. But he is he just going for it? Here he goes, the Zealots running in on top of those bunkers. Such a massive bio force. This is insanity, actually. The top bio doesn't have any... It's gone. Oh, my. Wow. Wow. I think we got time for one more today. Wow, wow, wow. And shoot a video like this. You'd agree, right? But with the... So just a failed all in. I guess you really can't chalk it up to much more than that. I think the real uh, surprise was that Midas went bio off two base. We saw good friend do bio off one base, three barracks, and bust through. Um, but using that bio kind of as a way to get to factory and I think that's a bit of brilliance out of Midas I, I really think it is because why else would you want to get that bio early other than to survive are you gonna be aggressive with that otherwise potentially maybe he was setting up for some kind of tank medic marine push there but by doing that it makes himself so safe against any Aggression from the Protoss player that comes from the ground. Something like Reavers would be a major concern. Okay, Tau Cross. So this is game three. The series is tied up 1-1. Which means this will be our last game today. And we'll finish up the series tomorrow, however many games we get. We have our orange Protoss player anytime spawning on the left-hand side of Tau Cross. And in the bottom, we have our purple Terran player. So the main is going to be exposed anytime's main to some drops out of Midas. We haven't seen that much out of Terran players back here in 2006, I think. They're sort of preferring a... a hmm, what would you say? Less delicate. A less delicate army composition. Do you see the pylon in base for any time? So this is the kind of map that I think two gates are really optimized for zealot pressure really optimized for so i i really do like protoss getting aggressive here on one base to take their expansion terran players really do feel the pressure on maps without those high ground mains and yeah we see that the scv production was stalled there for a moment wait a second 
Wait a second, this is a 10 10 10. It's gotta be, right? Because his barracks and refinery were started before that first supply depot finished. So I think this is a 10 10 10. And this makes a lot of sense on this map for a Terran player. So Midas, this is fantastic. I think he's the wants to take the aggression from any time and do something himself. Cybernetics core going down. We just do see some probes on that assimilator now. So this is this is going to be interesting. We're definitely going to see something coming out of Midas here. It looks like he's pulled all his SUVs off gas already. So that first factory starting. For those of you that don't know the 10 10 10, Flash does have a great uh, tutorial on the build. It's just, um, it's it's another way to expand. It's a way to expand aggressively, and it and it it does do strange things like win sometimes because you just have an earlier tank if you're gonna go with mines and vultures and do some do like a fake double. You just you got stuff earlier than Protoss really expect. Especially with mines, catching a Protoss player can be lights out. I mean, I'm surprised any time was so stressed out by that game, but it's clearly something he practiced, right? So he was intending to do this cheese. Maybe he didn't feel like it was going well. I mean, as soon as you see that many Marines, I think, you know, you kind of just want to give up. But this is, you know, the semifinals. You can't just concede a game, so you got to try. And we saw him try. But um, it was interesting that he decided to go up to Dark Templars. That's not necessarily something I, I fully understand. Obviously, he's practiced a ton, but maybe getting Storm is just something you, you can't do on one base. I mean... I could certainly concede that. And if you're really all in, then you can't pivot from that 3-4 gate play into a Nexus and come out ahead anyways. Chalk it up to a build order loss, I, I think. Which, in particular, I think is some brilliance out of Midas. Alright, so we see that first tank, and he did make, is that five or six marines? A lot. So the robotics facility has begun. That is a lot of marines. And he's continuing. Okay, we do see him rallying vultures. This is a huge army. Three dragoons out, but yeah, we see Anytime pulled way back. This could do, this could do a little bit. Only bringing one SCV, not a lot. He's getting the observatory on one base, so playing super safe here. Okay, that tank's trying to get picked, but two marines already down. He's really not connecting that much. Great micro from any time. Just kiting these marines. The the fourth one goes down. Another one going down. He is getting some mines, but any time's targeting the tank now. Yeah, and just starting the nexus in the face of this. I think he knows. He held no problem. Yeah, see that hold position. This tank has, you know, two goon shots, so, yeah, he needs to get out of there. The mines are great, but we saw how quickly he went up to one gate observe, uh, uh, one gate observatory, and just being cheeky with a pylon, that's funny. Stop the rally. That'd be hilarious if you could do something like that, kind of like the StarCraft II force fields on the ramps. Drop the main, force field the ramp. This is a map that force fields would be good, <laughs> aggressively. Good times. So he is going up to the robotic support bay. And I think uh, makes a lot of sense. He wants the expansion. He's going to use observers to get the expansion. And then he wants to go ahead and get aggressive from there. So getting the support bay. Going to hopefully be able to do some damage back and take take back the map. Protoss want the Terran players sitting in their base behind uh, walls of units and armies and all that. Nexus up a little bit earlier than the command center, but both finished. 
Yeah, we're 1-1, one, one, Andrew. 1-1 one, one in our series. Anytime tried to cheese in game two and it went horribly wrong. So, uh, we're game three on Tau Cross. Anytime didn't want to play on Arkanoid, the ridiculous island map, so we tried to cheese and it failed miserably. Okay, Reaver done. Oh, beautiful micro, and he's taking a third off this Reaver. And so this this becomes a little delicate. You really can't afford to lose the shuttle and the reaver if you're taking a third off this. He's actually not flying away with the shuttle immediately. Look at this, getting the armory, getting the academy. This is looking like modern play out of Midas. This is cool. Okay, he does load up the reaver. Is he waiting for a second one? It does look like he's waiting for a second one, right? And when before I said delicate, this becomes a knife edge. Committing to two reavers, and I think, that, yeah, there's already a Goliath out. He does wait for a second, so... Whew. This is something I wouldn't expect from any time. Oh, does he have speed as well? Okay, it's going to be a little more versatile with speed. Going up to four factories, and this is... This is what we saw from Idra, but Idra did it as a response to White Raw losing the shuttle, going up to four factories. This map, four factories, seems okay, right? You need a way to take your third. First Reaver shot, Scarab going... nothing. Two shots on the Goliaths, actually. Taking one of those Goliaths is super significant. Now he's just going to take a little bit of damage. He could swing around the bottom side if he wants. Looks like these two, two supply depots are going to go down. But there is a ton of space behind these minerals. Oh my goodness, this map's good. So if he wants, he can drop some units near that bottom side, but looks like he's going to swing around to where all the supply depots... Yeah, he's happy just to continue the supply block. Three SCVs going down and two Scarab shots. Not that bad. Getting one Scarab shot on that does get the tank. And a Goliath. Oh boy, this harassment is brutal. Yeah, it looks like any time's getting out of there. So this is this is impressive because he hasn't lost anything yet. And we see that third Nexus going up at the same time. And I think Midas was relying on having a big army, but we already saw a tank and a couple of Goliaths go down. So that's going to slow down his... or reduce the strength of his push when he wants to take that third. Poking around, sees the Goliath, needs to turn around. One Marine just taking some pot shots at that shuttle. Okay, shuttle flying around. Looks like the third CC wants to go up now. Oh... Yikes. Range goons. Range too much. That's what I'm talking about. This this shuttle should be should get parked pretty soon. Needs to use it to defend the push. Looks like he wants to go around the third. Two more shuttles. So maybe delaying uh Zealot speed here. Uh relying on speed shuttles, two shots taking out that tank immediately. That was some good harassment. You really have a window when the tank seeds to take them. Drop the Reavers, get the shot off, and take out tanks for... Scarabs are 15 minerals, so there'd be 30 minerals to kill a tank. Worth it. Worth it. All day. Plus one weapons is done, but I don't think I see a starport or a science facility yet, so likely going to start on plus one armor after that. Which is a significant compromise, right? Because you're basically waiting 168 seconds before you can start plus two weapons. Oh, no. Those Goliaths position beautifully. He does get out the Reavers, and he gets one shot on the tank, but tank Goliaths position beautifully. Does take out one last tank, but loses it all. So he lost something like three tanks, a couple Goliaths, some supply depots. So there was a significant cost to this, but 
It was such a massive investment. It's gonna, yeah, we see him loading up those zealots. He does have three shuttles already. I think he wants to bulldog this. It's really not a bulldog, but this is gonna be insane. Look at Midas. See, Midas is really impressing me with just making units. I don't quite understand how he has such so much stuff here. I mean, it is pretty late in the game. We've got to be sitting at like the 11 minute mark, but just so much stuff. Double forge going down, upgrades. No observer to scout, losing a goon to a mine. A little bit of unnecessary damage, but anytime wants to get something done here. So three shuttles, it's zealot speed's done now. But look at that, that is incredible. The Goliaths are a problem here, but anytime's ready to go. So the uh, the Dragoon's starting to pick, and it looks like the shuttles are actually coming in from the east side. Gonna be able to get on top of these tanks. I mean, he needs to, oh, yikes. So many Zealots being dropped on top of that tanks. Now the Dragoons are getting up to the tanks and starting to take them down. There's a deep, deep line of tanks here. And all the Zealots are gone now. Picking off some reinforcements, that's free damage, awesome. But the Dragoons, the Dragoons. Yeah, they're out of there. They're going straight to the production now. This is a good choice, clearing this up. A lot of Zealots being rallied, a couple Goliaths taking shots at the shuttles. And now these SCVs trying to get a surround on the Goons, but they are getting out of there. A couple do go down. And now, two, group, two rallies of Zealots running around. I think he wants to hit the third from here. Now that those tanks are slightly out of position, a good placement of mines stopping the... But nothing here at the line. The Zealots are getting right up to the SUVs, and he's going to have to run them. Oh, losing about half a dozen SUVs there. Is he going to go to the tanks? He is running straight up to those tanks. Quite a bit of splash damage, killing one of the tanks. The second one does go down, and another rally army. While these goons are hitting the side here, just cleaning up some uh, vultures. And now he's going to bring that army together. He hasn't taken a fourth yet, though. So I do get a little worried about any time here. Not really having a plan. He's going up to Arbiter Tech, but not having uh, economic follow-up. It looks like he wants to just drop the main, which is certainly an idea, right? What's he got in here? Nothing? Is it just a fake? Hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have that massive army you might expect here. Great Sim City with his army, or with his buildings. Still posturing a lot. A couple mines getting laid out. Not doing too much damage, just hitting the zealots. That's what zealots are meant for sometimes. Just clean up the mines. Starting to add some supply depots to create a wall. Is any time really wanting to do more here? If he's got zealots in those sh sh shuttles, I think he can get something done. But I don't know if he does. Okay, he is taking his fourth at the mineral only. So starting to think about the follow-up here. This is just amazing placement from Midas. If Midas wins this game, it's really on the back of just well-placed units. We saw him pick off that shuttle, clean up the reavers, and then just having a great tank line to defend that bust on the natural. Yeah, Midas being impressive here. Our first Arbiter's out. And is he wanting to get aggressive here? Looks like he's loading up some Zealots. He's doing something here, so maybe just trying to clean up some mines. The army isn't going. Here it goes now. We see him trying to attack directly into the tanks this time. Some of the Zealots getting on top. The There's just not enough units, though. Wow. See, I don't quite understand any time's pers uh, insistence to, to attack into this line. I mean, clearly this was kind of his strategy. He, he planned to bust, but it's, it's not working. It really isn't working. Maybe in practice his Reaver was able to do more damage. And now the probe's actually getting caught by some uh, vultures. Amazing. Well, only a couple probes going down, so not that much damage done. But four probes lost there. 
Oh, he's coming in again. Getting two, two more. So many factories. Okay, plus two and plus, uh, two two must must be on the way or close to being finished. And I imagine that's going to be timing for Midas to get get out on the map and take his fourth. It looks like he might be taking his fourth right now. We see him starting to lay mines on the map, so it's really uh, the first the first part of a push is get some map presence, get some mines sort of set up your attack paths which way which way am I going and my minds can kind of defend the the counter paths and we did see that fourth going up for Midas so man I'm really liking Midas's position here as soon as 2-2 is done and we're, we are clicked on an SCV here but if he does I don't know if I necessarily love this just running in a bunch of I mean he can do some probe damage but there's a lot of nexuses to rebuild getting there's not much in the main to kill. He gets five probes. Now just mining up to be annoying. So is he planning to move out with this? There's not... I mean, vultures don't kill buildings, right? They're not zerglings or anything. Yeah, kind of... But he is continuing, so he did pull a, a portion of... of his army back, but any time, great positioning, leaving some goons... And it looks like any time wants the main here. And that would make a lot of sense to me. A three-player map, the Protoss should be taking that main. Contesting it as early as possible. That's a huge army. Fourth is finished for Midas. 2-2 Two is done for any time. I don't know if we've seen the Terran upgrades lately. Last I saw was 1-0, but plus one armor was definitely on its way. There it is, 2-2. Two -two. I'm surprised he's not going here. I actually am. So he must be waiting for Max now. Or I mean, maybe, maybe he's content to sit. If any time's gonna attack into him, I guess I kind of I get it, right? You're, why, why do I have to attack if the Protoss player is just gonna attack? I'm happy to take bases and be ridiculous. Okay, okay. Ooh, that's a lot of tanks. So he is repositioning here. I don't know if he wants to get aggressive, but he is at least taking this move out from anytime seriously. And yeah, anytime, this is really the area that Protoss want to engage. It's so nice and open. A lot of Goliaths actually focus firing the Arbiters, and if he gets both of them immediately, one stasis going down on a single tank. That was sad. Does he have another stasis? I don't, whoa, where are the Vultures? All of those Zealots getting on top of the tanks. Where are the Vultures? More zealots getting on top of the tank. Look at the... So many tanks going down to themselves. Was that actually... Okay, no. <laughs> I speak too soon. I think Midas can certainly remake vultures if he needs them. He does have a healthy tank army here. But still, when, what's going what's gonna to cause Midas to actually go... Because that was a huge blunder, in my opinion. Like, losing those Arbiters, getting a sad stasis. He is just going to siege up and start repairing the damage he did take. I mean, that was that was a very efficient trade for Midas. Okay, starting to add a high Templar. And I do really like this. I think... I think uh, any time is in need of some magic here up to three factories with machine shops and that sort of matches the number of gases he has makes a lot of sense to me <coughs> okay now taking that main this is quite the game quite the game okay it looks like he wants to maybe get a recall here we do see that arbiter moving over to the four o'clock base i don't know if he knows about that base yet but He's going to have to make a decision. Is he going to go on the main or just deny the base? Arbiter's flying into the main. A lot of mines down already. And actually, we actually see some Goliaths. He needs to get this. Doesn't even try it. Wow. Goliaths are really just amazing when it comes to anti-air. 
Oh, a good group of vultures denying this base, and that's actually good. That's really good from Midas. But at any time, huge swell of units running across the map, a huge line. And we see the... Oh, man. Oh, good scan. And he is really just making Goliath tank, which it surprises me, really. I mean, I, oh, here we go. So anytime he's running in here, the storms, we're going to see how good they are. Can the High Templars even get close enough to get a storm off? I don't... Did he even... Where are your storms? What's going on? What? What was that? I feel like any time through that game, I'm going to be honest. Whoa. I mean, he was certainly stressed out in game two. I mean, you do an all-in and it goes completely sour, but that game, it was like, oh, man, over and over again. Well, we'll save, save game four and possibly game five for tomorrow, but Midas is looking super strong, super just solid, uh, making a ton of units and getting the win there. So 2-1 for Midas. We'll finish up the best of five tomorrow. My name's Archaic. Have yourself an excellent, excellent evening.